Settled Souls. Welcome to the correct views. And Sam, I beat again. She's doing political commentary for the media speaks. Hello to everyone on high def. Hello everyone on low def. I actually have a way to do this now like I used to. Um, I wasn't going to go live today. And then I spent hours upon hours working on some research regarding the Trump impeachment. And now I have found that the Trump impeachment people are still in full bloom here. So we're going to go over some of the facts pertaining to it. And I'm sure you guys saw in the title that there's a lot more going to it as well. As you watch, please remember that YouTube has demonetized almost all of us. So we're making money because of you. That means you're donating at the correct views at Hotmail.com and that you are giving through PayPal and you are funding the work that we do here because we bring you facts. What kind of facts as we go to screen share? How about this? You guys on HDF can see behind me. There is the ever-hateful Maxine Waters, a James Brown wig wearing one herself. Let's take a look at some facts here that came out that I don't think Miss Maxine Waters is going to be so happy to hear about, considering that she's been preaching for Trump to be impeached all along. And the only one who was found to have investments knee-deep in the Trump scandal is none other than Miss Maxine Waters herself. Isn't that interesting? Then we find out later on that the entire Trump scandal that she preaches so heavily about in regards to whether or not Trump did something wrong are all things that have been uncovered in open conversation in newspapers all over everywhere. And I'm, I'm now trying to call up the, uh, the sources I have because wouldn't you know the moment you go to call them they all vanish. But it's fine. They're on here. I will locate them promptly. Um, we can go first of all with Zero Hedge. Putin trolls U.S. ready to give transcript of the conversation between Lavrov and Congress. How many of you now have been forced to listen to the great lie that somehow Trump did something nefarious, he did something behind someone's back, yada, 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 and now it comes to light? that everything that he was given is, is a matter of public record. Let's look at this. Zero Hedge, as the quest to unearth just what Trump told Russian Foreign Minister Lavrov continued, an unexpected development emerged on Wednesday morning when none other than Russian President Vladimir Putin said that Trump did not share any classified information or state secrets to Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov. And to prove it, he was ready to hand over a transcript of the talks between Putin and Lavrov to Congress if the U.S. requests it. I personally was very delighted by this information. I found what I was looking for just a second ago. I was very happy with this information. I am going to go to screen share so that you guys can see all of it. Now, I'm using Zero Hedge here because I support Zero Hedge. This has been shared by CBS and others. There you can see on HDEF behind me, uh, uh, low def is seeing it right now. Speaking at a news conference alongside Italian Prime Minister Paolo Gen Gentiloni, I'm, at, I'm part Italian, Sicilian, I should do a better job with the name. He reported that Putin equipped that Lavrov had not passed what he said were non-existent secrets onto him either. Putin said Russia was ready to hand over a transcript from Putin's meeting with Lavrov, over to U.S. lawmakers if that would help reassure them. If the administration deems it possible, we are ready to provide the Senate and Congress with the transcript of the conversation between Lavrov and Trump, Putin said at a press conference following a meeting with the Italian Prime Minister on Wednesday. No, I don't mean Wednesday, Adams. While initially Reuters reported, there's another source, Reuters, 
reported that Putin was ready to give a recording of the conversation, a subsequent class clarification by Reuters quoted a Kremlin aide, Yuval Yuskov, as saying Putin is prepared to provide a transcript, not audio. That's because they, they, they may not have even had the audio there. It's hard to say. They don't audio everything. Some they do, some they don't. The overlying, overreaching, you can read the rest of it there. Hit screen share. I'm not going to read it all to you. Three, two, one. You guys know the rules of the show. Let's look at this. Um, intelligence shows that the Islamic State developing a bomb hidden in uh, portable electronics. As you can see that right there. That's the accusation. Here it is, posted in the Washington Post. Trump went off script and began describing an Islamic State terrorist threat related to the laptop computers on an aircraft. Well, if you're following my mouse or an HDF, if you're following my finger, right there it is, posted mainstream media. Let's go on. Uh, Max Boot, U.S. raid in Yemen led to laptop ban on flights. There it is. The president and foreign minister reviewed common threats from the terrorist organization to include threats to aviation. Follow the mouse, follow the finger. Follow the mouse, follow the finger. There you can see that all of this was already in the paper and many papers, as a matter of fact, and Trump is prepared to go ahead and take it one step further. Trump is prepared, as is Russia, to release the transcripts. Here's what this boils down to, friends. The mainstream media didn't talk about some of the things that Trump talked about because they're too busy with an agenda. Those of us who have been following this and reporting on Real News Now for eons, this we knew about this a very long time ago. I want to say that this very show talked about it. The only reason I'm not going to make that claim is I'm not sure which show it was on, and I don't feel like spending a hundred years to dig it up because I have over 700 of them. But I promise you I have covered this. It might have been with the Media Speaks, and they have over... A, 1,200 videos, so I'd never find it. But I guarantee freaking tea we covered it. And that's not saying that I'm so great, because a lot of other people did too. And it boils down to this. The left is infuriated that we have said no to health care being destroyed. I don't know about you, but I had a really good health care plan prior to Obamacare. I've talked about the time, no, I'm not flipping you off, that I cut the tip of my finger off, which you can see right there rather clearly, and my insurance cost me about $1,000-ish for, uh, to sew it back on. And considering that I'm a keyboardist, I loved it. If that had happened today, I would not be a keyboardist, because my insurance has been destroyed so much that the amount of money it would cost to have the emergency room sew my fingertip back on, broken aquarium for those of you wondering, uh, I would not be a keyboardist. I wouldn't be able to afford it. Another instance, I had vertigo. It wasn't caused by anything, and sometimes people just get it with an inner ear infection. However, I couldn't stand up straight and I was puking, so they gave me a CAT scan, they gave me uh, an MRI, they gave me a whole bunch of stuff, and it cost about $1,000 as well. It was under the same insurance. Fortunately, it was just a case of vertigo, and I was very, very fortunate, because it's never come back. The point here is that if that was to happen now, I would not have a finger, and I would probably still not know whether or not I had brain cancer, because I would not have been able to afford to go to the doctors to find out. Um, staying with other news, friends, moving right along... College destroys books after digitalization, sparking fears of 1984-style censorship. My point being that the Democrats were soundly rejected, by the way. We don't want their health care. We don't want open borders. We don't want high taxes. We don't want NAFTA. We don't want trade deals that aren't unilateral. You lost. Get used to it. Kit Daniels, Prison Planet, College Destroys Books After Digitalization. Now, what this is is they are saying that now that in, we live in the digital age, we don't need actual paper books anymore. The trouble is that the translations are being removed. 
and altered for people that have an agenda. Listen to this. California, no surprise, universities were caught removing and even destroying library books after digitizing them, a process critics warn leads to 1984-style censorship in which only corrected copies of the books remain. Which means by the time this is done, Christ will be a homosexual. UC Berkeley, in particular, recently removed 135,000 books from its school library, claiming that by digitizing the books, the library space can be reused for meeting rooms and nap pods. Which is great, unless we get an EMP solar flare, in which case we're all done and we have none of our books left anymore. See where this goes. Libraries have existed since the Middle Ages as vaults of knowledge safe from tampering in comparison the way universities are disappearing books after digitizing them allows anyone with a politically correct agenda a way to alter the books during digitalization, including important texts from history, science, and humanities without anyone ever knowing. Quote, the removal of 60% of the physical collection at the Science Library at the University of California, Santa Cruz, for instance, caused an uproar after it was reported that many of the books removed had been destroyed, reported the Christian Science Monitor. For those of you that say that I don't give sources. Um, a campus spokesman said that nothing had been lost since the scholarly record since duplicates were retained in other libraries. Given the short time frame and seeing the lack of consultation with the faculty, however, many critics expressed doubts that this was actually the case. This is, of course, draws parallels to the novel 1984, and if you haven't read it, you need to. For those of you that don't read, which would be almost everyone in America, then do make sure you look it up, at least in the movie. Basically, friends, here's what we are talking about. We're talking about, let's say they take the Bible. They don't like the Bible. So, they don't like the agenda of the Bible anyway. So what they do is they say, all right, let's make, uh, let's take all references of the Bible to homosexuality out of it. Okay, now that's an extreme example because there's so many copies of the Bible that that could never happen. But you get what I'm saying. If they don't like the fact that the Doors, for instance, uh, talked about a dusky jewel when he was talking about a black girl. If they don't like that, and that's a racist, that's so racist, oh my god, that's so racist, then they're going to go ahead and they're going to move that from the written lyrics. All right, maybe the doors are too popular. Do you see where I'm going with this? What is your favorite book that might offend the people with the grand eraser that is digitizing the books and then destroying the originals? How about really underground books? How about things like the story of O? Oh. Most people don't know what I mean. Those that do can't believe I just went there, but I have proven my point. Um, friends, check this out. Uh, not everything has to be doom and gloom here at the correct views. Otherwise, I will lose all of my Democrats. Here is a flying car. I will actually be able to buy this year. How many of you know that I'm absolutely obsessed with the flying car? How many of you aren't? That's fine. We'll get to other news in a minute. I know you want Democrat bad, Republican good, to quote uh, Michael Savage. Well, I'm a libertarian. I'm not really fond of either one, though I do think Trump is doing a good but not a great job. Do I like him? Yes. Am I happy I voted for him? Yes. Would I have rather had Rand Paul? Yes. Um, listen to this. Flying cars are the future, right? In the 1960s, the world imagined a future in which anyone could afford to take a drive above the scenery, but the technology simply never got there. Now, Slovakian startup Aeromorbel has announced that it will be launching a flying car this year, and unlike the first prototype unveiled in 2014, this one will be commercially available. Now, I don't know how many of you are with me on this that are obsessed. How so many of you joining in? Thank you. Please don't go away. Welcome aboard. Um, I'm obsessed with the flying car. And here's the way I think this is going to happen. I don't think that you and I are going to go to the store and buy the flying car. But what's happening is you don't need a pilot's license to use it. You program where you want to go. And after various towers are open to allow you to use it, then your car will take off. You cannot just make it take off. That's not going to happen because people will see where that's going to go. We have airlines crashing in the skies now, so you're not going to be able to fly wherever you want to. That's probably a bad idea. You'd be hitting helicopters that are transporting sick people to hospitals over flight lanes all because you wanted to fly in the sky. So that's not going to happen. However, 
Imagine a world before gas stations. People said, oh, they're not going to be able to build all those gas stations. They did. There's a million small runways in the United States of America. Like, for instance, I live in Ohio. I know about the Akron-Canton Airport. All the major hubs, Cleveland, Toledo, Columbus, blah, blah, blah. However, Sandusky has a little airport up by Cedar Point. How many of you are roller coaster fans? Me, anyone? Nah, 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 whatever. Um, they have an airport. There's millions of little airports all over. And there'll be many more cropping up once this takes off. And the first thing that's going to happen is Uber, Lyft, and transportation companies are going to get involved in this. And they're going to be driving to the airport, and there'll be these little air taxis that just beep, 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 back and forth, transporting people. Other people, people like me that don't have a lot of money, maybe like you, they're going to go ahead and they're going to buy this car in, like, pools. Me and maybe ten other people will buy this car, and then we will use it. And that's going to happen first. So this is why this story is interesting and affects the average person, because you'll be able to get it before you're able to actually own it yourself, if you're following what I'm saying here. Uh, Aeromobile recently raised $3.2 in funding, which isn't that much for such a huge endeavor when you think about it. And it will show off the car at the top Marquis Monaco, the supercar show taking place on April 20th. That'd be 420, so it happened. I hope they got really high. I had to do it. The car is completely integrated aircraft and fully functioning four-wheel car powered by hybrid propulsion. So what that means is you don't need to get a pilot's license. <clears throat> you don't need to be some expert in order to have the car. And I personally am very excited about it. I've got two stories to get to. One of them is the dumdy of the day. But I would be remiss if I did not thank the people who have helped me. Who would that be? How about the Seacrest Motel right there? You see them? They're up in Sandusky, I was just talking about it. I'm a roller coaster freak. The RNC mean streak is being built up in Sandusky. The races are going on. Friends, if you're going to be in Ohio, I mean with anywhere and within about, I don't know, 30, 50 miles of Sandusky, check this place out. It's the Seacrest Motel, and I need you to do me a favor if you want to get the best price. I need you to tell them that you heard about it from the correct views. When you do that, you're going to get a discount above and beyond what they already give, which is way better than the breakers and everyone else. You're going to get the deal that you're looking for, and you're going to get a great deal because you're wise enough to listen to the correct views. And uh, check this out. No, it's not pornography, though I guess for some hip-hop fans it could be. Uh, here we have prehistoric human DNA is found in caves without bones. Which, you know, sounds a lot like modern hip-hop to me. Um... Well, not the underground stuff like Steve Grant, but definitely the Chris Brown garbage. Uh, yes, I went there. YahooNews.com, international scientists. Well, Lady Gaga doesn't sound any better. International scientists have uncovered prehistoric human DNA from caves without bones, an advance that could shed new light on the human history and evolution. Now, many of you will know that we've talked about on this show before, there is no such thing as macroevolution. In other words, a fish did not become a man any more than this hairbrush became the computer. Okay, it's not the case. However, things change within species, such as when the uh, white moth became the peppered moth due to pollution and changes in the air. They couldn't blend in with the leaves anymore, so they became peppered because the leaves that they were emulating became peppered. But they were still a moth. They weren't a bird or a human or a fish or a mineral or whatever. Uh, mineral. You guys know what I mean. It didn't change its species. Well, listen to this. Maybe we didn't either, which is what I, we've all known is the case. The study published in the journal Science is based on 85 samples from sediments dating to the Pleistocene period, a period that extended 550,000 years ago until 14,000 years before the modern era. The samples came, samples came from eight caves in Belgium, Croatia, France, Russia, and Spain. And uh, if you don't believe it, blame Putin. Of course, the Democrats do that. It will work for you, too. These archaeological sites are already well-known and have been occupied by long-lost cousins of modern humans, Neanderthals and uh, Denisovans, as well as a variety of animals that are now extinct. The work represents an enormous scientific breakthrough, says Antonio Rostas, a scientist at Spain's Natural Science Museum in Madrid. We can now tell which species of Hamasut occupied the cave and which particular stratigraphic level, even when no skeletal remains are present. So the point is, 
what they're not wanting to say here is God did not create fish so that they could become man, so that they could become whatever. For those of you that don't believe in God, the great Darwin fish did not become the man that we now know as human beings. That didn't happen. Man has evolved within his species. A man has not ever been an ape. He won't ever be an ape. And that includes when someone is as ugly as I am. And that goes on! I can, yeah, yeah, the dumbie of the freaking day. Now, the dumbie of the day is when we talk about the absolute stupidest story that I have seen of the day. And uh, we got that right here. Now, I see, I write for Blasting News, so I'm not attacking Blasting News, but I am going to question the author here a bit, because we all have free reign here. And Heather Tooley, I don't know you, but you're going to win. You've just won the dumb of the day. Baron Trump makes hush-hush trip to the White House. What's behind that? Ooh, what's behind that? Maybe that his father is the president. And he visited him. Oh, maybe he was taking school children there to visit his parents, and there were 80 of them. And it took a Secret Service detail a very long time to clear this. That happened, by the way. Oh, there's a mystery. I bet you he snuck in. Baron Trump is waiting in the shadows, and he's going to kill his family. <laughs> what is wrong with you people? Why do you think he was there? Why do you think it was hush-hush? Ridiculous! Boneheaded! First son, Baron Trump, made a hush-hush trip, like he should have put it on Twitter so he can get himself kidnapped, made a hush-hush trip to the White House last week. It wasn't reported until Page Six dished out the interesting scoop on Monday. Apparently, the visit occurred last week, and the 11-year-old son of Donald and Melania Trump was joined by 80 of his classmates. All right, what was he supposed to do? I hear that when he goes to his next school, it's, it's over in uh, uh, New England, he's going to go ahead and they're going to hire somebody to write it in the sky. It's going to say, please kidnap me because I'm an idiot. I didn't make a hush-hush because the media is full of morons. Trump showed fellow classmates what dad does for a living. I thought it was some great mystery. My friends, look. My, my, you can read the article. I'm going to scroll down it. By all means, you guys know the rules of the show. Hit pause at any time. Did you want to read it? I hope you read it. It's done. All right, friends, here's what it boils down to. Anything in the whole world that can possibly harm President Trump is going to be done. Okay? We know that allegedly Donald Trump knew somebody who bought a pair of used shoestrings from a vendor on the corner in New York. And that vendor had a friend who had a cousin who had a girlfriend that once knew somebody that lived in Russia. Therefore, we know Trump has Russian ties, and so does his son. At that point, friends, that is how ridiculous it is! You're listening to The Correct Views. Please donate if you can. That's at thecorrectviews at hotmail.com through PayPal. HDEF, let me know what you think of the way it looks now. LOWDEF, let me know what you thought of the live show. And thank you, friends, for listening. I'm going to hush, hush, shut the show off. I wonder why. Maybe I'm just done. <gasps>